In order to work with rest in our application, we have to adopt some new verbs that we can use to talk about performing actions on our resources. There are five verbs, which are actually HTTP operations. Get, post, put, patch, and delete. And you can see I have those in the far left column of my table. Get and post you recognize as HTTP operations we've seen when we get a URL or we post a form. Get is for most links. We're getting information back from the server. In our simple CMS, we used post for forms that create, update, and delete items. However, in REST, post is only used to create a new item. When we want to update an existing item, we use put or patch. Put is used when we want to replace the resource completely. Patch is for when we want to make changes to just a portion of the resource. Rails used to perform updates using put, but starting in Rails 4, it uses patch, which is more technically correct, but it still supports put for backwards compatibility. Lastly, when we want to delete an item, we use delete. Why not just use post for all of these like we've been doing? Because we want to reserve post for an operation on our resource that should really only be run one time, such as adding a new item. You wouldn't want to accidentally add the item more than once. That's why when you reload a posted form page in your browser, you get a message that says, are you sure that you want to repost this form data? Put and delete also make changes to our resource, but unlike post, a web browser or web server can run them multiple times without any problem. They just attempt to make the same update to the resource again, like repeating your address to someone over the phone a second time. In the strict sense, patch is supposed to only be able to run once. Making a change to a resource could change the state of the resource so that a duplicate patch request would cause a problem. However, in practice, it's usually fine to repeat a patch request. If I change a user's email address in the database to a new address, it's not a big deal if I tell the database to update it again. Get very familiar with this list of five verbs. Having these verbs and the differences between them committed to memory will make learning rest much easier for you. There is an important point that you need to note. Even though HTTP supports our five rest verbs, and most web servers support our five rest verbs, different HTML versions have varying levels of support for rest. Most of the HTML versions don't support it at all. Rails uses a hack as a workaround so that you can use REST universally. It fakes a true REST request by adding a hidden field called underscore method to all of your forms that will indicate the true REST method. So the form actually uses post, but when Rails gets the request and sees that hidden field, it knows to treat it like the REST method that you've specified. Hopefully in the future, all versions of HTML will support these REST methods and will be able to do away with this hidden field. If we're using the form helpers, then we won't have to worry about it. We won't have to change a thing in our code. Rails can make the switch for us behind the scenes and just simply stop doing the conversion and adding that hidden field for us.